Now I'm sure you can remember, there used to be a time when you could smoke in the office. There used to be a time when you could simply work nine to five. And there used to be a time when if you had a job that you wanted to fill, you would put out an ad in a newspaper, you would put the job up on a message board, and one by one, candidates, one by one these prospects would come to you and they would try to convince you why they should work for you. They would talk about their accomplishments, they would talk about their skills, they would talk about their experiences, all the things that they've done to try to convince you why you should hire them. Now look at the world that we're in today. Of course, you don't smoke in the office. This idea of working nine to five has completely been replaced by this concept of work-life integration. And today, what happens when you have a job that you wanna fill? It's now the candidates, the prospects are asking you the questions. They wanna know what's the corporate culture like? What's your leadership style like? Is there gonna be a sense of purpose and meaning? What impact am I gonna have? They're asking you the questions. And so this really cool shift that we're starting to see is that we have to move away from creating an organization where we assume that people want to be there, or I'm sorry, need to be there, to creating an organization where people want to be there. And this shift from need to want is really what I think a lot of organizations around the world are struggling with. And they're trying to figure out how do we actually make this transformation? Now, I want you to imagine for a minute if every organization around the world was honest about what it was like to work there. Not like brutally honest. Um, and you had a prospect and a candidate who wanted to apply for a job. You know, we, we tell people uh, all these fascinating stories about what it's like to work at our company, but if we were all honest for most organizations around the world, not yours of course, what would we tell them? We would say something along the lines of, well, you know, uh, it says you're gonna work 32 to 40 hours a week. Really, you're gonna be working 50 to 60. You might have some managers who take credit for some of your work. We have technologies that were designed in the 80s and the 90s, so, you know, good luck figuring that stuff out. We have a flexible work program, but if you take advantage of it, you kind of get stigmatized as being lazy. And most of the time you're here, you're gonna be sitting in a box. Do you wanna work here? Well, we don't say that to people, right? Instead, we tell these wonderful stories about what it's like to work at an organization. But the difference is that now those stories have to be true. If you say that you're a great place to work, if you say your leaders care about you, if you say there's coaching and mentoring, if you say that employees are gonna make a difference, you actually need to make those things a reality. You actually have to make those things true. And this is the world that we're in now of trying to make these things happen. Hey everyone, it's Jacob here. Thanks for watching. I wanted to let you know about a brand new resource that I just created called the Quick Guide to Improving Employee Experience, which you can download at employeeexperienceguide.com. That's employeeexperienceguide.com. And in this PDF, you're gonna learn exactly what employee experience is, why it's important, and you're gonna get some action items, some things that you can start doing right away inside of your organization. Employee experience is the number one business trend for organizations around the world when it comes to attracting and retaining top talent. But what exactly is it? Where do we begin? What do we do? I'm gonna talk about all of that and a lot more. Again, you can grab the PDF at employeeexperienceguide.com. That's employeeexperienceguide.com. I'll see you next time.